What's up everybody, Excel Dude coming at you again. Today we're going to show you how to calculate what the payment would be for a loan, uh, what the interest portion would be, the principal portion, uh, how much you've paid so far, so cumulative interest, and also cumulative principal. So we'll do it on an annual and monthly basis. Let's go into it. So first we've got this. Let's see, I'm again using hypotheticals here because who knows with how much money the Fed prints, what interest rates will be forever, and also, you know, QE and whatever, how much home prices will appreciate in the next seemingly month. Anyway, payment equals this function right here, payment, PMT. Super easy to remember, PMT, payment. And it calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant rate. So your normal fixed rate mortgage. Right here, we need to find our rate. So it tells us that. I'll click here, interest rate, that's 5%, comma. Then I'm going to look at the present value. Or, or sorry, number of periods. So 30 years, we click that. Our present value, say we borrowed $200,000. And then the future value, when it's all paid off, what's that loan value going to be? Big fat zero, goose egg. And it's going to be end of the period because it is an annuity in terms of uh, compounding its end of month calculations, zero. So normal mortgage, hit a zero, end of the period. Enter. So annually, every year you'd pay $13,010.29 at, say, 5% interest. But let's say it goes to 3%. It's 10000 2.8, 5, and there it is. That's why this is nice. It'll update with interest rates and let you get an idea of what your payment would be. But let's say you want to see it monthly. For me, that's more relevant than the annual anyway. So we'll go here. And we could do the easy thing and just do equals divided by 12, but I don't really like that. I want to see the detailed breakdown. The first trick is you take the interest divided by 12 equals, you click this, slash or divided by 12. We have that. We'll make it into percentage. So we'll just change that, add a few zeros, because we always deal with basis points. Then we will go to years. Remember, that's going to be 30. There's 12 months in a year. So 30 times 12 is 360. Present value, that's the same. So we can just copy that right over and equals. Again, we can click or arrow key, whatever works better for you. So right now, equals payment rate, comma, number of periods, 360. And then I'm just arrow keying here. And then instead of clicking with the mouse, future value, or no, present value, borrowed 200, future value, zero. And it's going to be end of period, so hit zero again. Close it. There you go. Monthly, it's this, and it's that. And then with this, all you're going to need to do, if it's 3%, they all update. So that's a nice little bonus there for you. All you have to do is operate one cell. We'll just say that. We'll call it, we'll just go three. So 3%, that's what that would be annually, every month, it's a quarter of a percent. And there's your breakdown. But interest payment, I wanna know how much I'm paying in interest each month. So we'll use the monthly here, equals IPMT. Same thing, but with an I in front. And returns the interest payment for a given period. Okay, it's based on the same thing. Periodic, constant payments, and a constant rate. So this, the inputs for this are the same as the inputs for this. So all we do, click there, period. So this one is a little bit different. All we'll do here is month number, and let's say one, why not? And we'll do the same thing for the one below it. Okay. So equals I PMT, the rate, right there. There's our monthly, the period, one, number of periods, there are 360 still, present value, 200, future value, good old zero, and end of period still. So our interest payment for period one is going to be $500. So of that 843, 500 is there. Now if you wanted to look at month two, that's why we did a cell, we just clicked here. Second month, third month, 250th, 
359 or yeah and there you go you see it's pretty flexible you can see what you want to do now we'll do the principal component equals PPMT so equals payment PMT interest payment IPMT principal payment PPMT the rate same thing click there let's use a comma then the period we're going to do number one number of period same thing 360 you get the idea future value zero and end of the period zero close it voila so we can change this and you know what let's actually do this get a little more fancy you click here in your formula and if you want to change it up we're going to make it so they're both looking at this first number here so we get the same for interest and principal you can click a cell click F2 and then you can just drag these wherever you want. You don't have to mess around with all this stuff, be able to read it like a dang book. Problem solved. So we'll dump this. And then month two. They update. Three. 250. 172. And so on. And then if we want to see the interest we've paid so far, we'll do it off of this month as well. 172 equals CUM IPMT. So cumulative interest. And again, just the cumulative interest between two periods. So the same inputs, rate, here, click it. Number of periods, there's 360. Present value is, let's call it 200. Start period, and we will go with one. So we'll start at month one. End period, I'm gonna go with 172. And that's what we're looking at now. And the type, end of period, right there. Close it. So at payment 172, you would have paid 3% interest on a $200,000 loan, $71,388.56. If you go to month 50, you see they all update, 100. But 360, your total interest cost if you just make the payments and no extra. Wow, didn't even show it. That's terrifying. 103000 So you see on a 3% interest uh, mortgage, over a 30-year loan, you're paying 50% interest over it, and that's the principal really adds up if you throw the extra 20 or so bucks every month. But we'll do the principal component equals PPMT. Oh, sorry, not that. P uh, cumulative principal turns a cumulative principal, and the same inputs rate. You go with number of periods 360, present value 200, start period is going to be one again in period right there and zero so those are very similar as well you see we paid exactly two hundred thousand dollars makes sense and right here you go 10 20 30 50 360 right here so if you do that total cost equals sum we can click these and that. So for that $200,000 loan, you paid a total of $303,554.90. That's why banking is such a good industry. Anyway, um, that's been it. If this is helpful, great. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.